Hi, I'm Benedetta Grasso. We're celebrating the week of Italian language at the Settimana della Lingua Italiana. Uh, New York is reading more Italian books than ever during these days, thanks to the great digital partnership between the Consulate General of Italy, the New York Public Library, and the Rizzoli Bookstore. They are all making the best of Italian literature available to everyone. I am a screenwriter and a writer, and I was born in a family who worshipped translation and languages and books and words. My great-grandfather was um, one of the first Italian literary agents um, who would correspond with people like Conan Doyle or Huxley or The New Yorker or had a very legendary like life in terms... He was a poor Jewish tailor that very, people, very few people know about, but he, his life was full, of, was full of adventure and full of cosmopolitanism. And his son, after going through the Shoah and a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the racial laws, he was, um, a, is a pub he was a publisher, my grandfather, who founded a publishing house that was, that was also focused on sort of bringing in from outside a lot of books um, uh, and also kind of stemmed from fighting fascism and the Nazis because it stemmed from fighting the idea of like one cultural purity and of bringing in uh, and translating things from all over the world and um, so um, but in that, in, in, so in that context I, I chose this book called Lessico Familiare by Natalia Ginsburg because the expression Lessico Familiare, the title of the book, already tells you everything you need to know and has three different kind of meanings for me um, the first one it's literal because I read it for a school assignment when I was 11 and while I was reading it, I was, even if not, I'm not related to Natalia Ginsburg, I was like, but this is the story of my family, not necessarily because of the people that were mentioned, uh, the circle which included publishers like Giulia Inaudi or um, Adriano Olivetti or, or Cesare Pavese, who was a writer, or my own grandfather, but because I could recognize the words that were used in that, in the, in that book as like my own heritage. Um, and also because my grandfather was a good friend of Natalia, so much so that they shared a lot of experiences in their youth. They were um, basically, they, they, they sent a postcard that I have um, after watching um, Bicycle Thieves, where they were basically uh, talking about like, how nobody died from the flu, which is an interesting thing to read this year. And then the second meaning is more related to the plot of the book, which is about how she is basically, as, since she was a kid, she's a writer, she's a female writer, she had received the words, this book was translated all over the world, and she would note around like things around the house that like her brothers, she's the fifth of, um, the, the last one of like five, and basically um, she, would, she would pick up on words or puns or, or games that like you play while you're hiking or like, expressions around the table and through that she built like a very personal memoir within in the way that you're supposed to kind of write a memoir like really truly immersing in the language and the third one which is, relates to the, the language um it's that lessico familiare can be roughly translated in sort of more than like familiar sayings in like an inside joke almost but like a family inside joke like things that you have within your own family that like only you know or like that have shaped like something like your mom would say and um, but it also kind of applies to a word of translation a word of learning because you're basically saying that to, to understand something you have to understand the context and the secret language around it and once you get that then you get everything and so I kind of grew up in this in this environment and that book has always meant a lot to me and when we're celebrating Italian language we're also celebrating a generation and a group of people in Turin that kind of founded um, the publishing world in Italy um, and those people actually mixed a lot of languages and they were a lot more, um, oh, they were very open-minded and they, they fought like the sort of uh, you, like monothematic like rules of, 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 a, of a country that wanted to like impose one language but in reality, they also translated a lot of books. And by translating, that's another way of teaching the language because some of these people were uh, incredible writers. And, um, and basically, a lot of Italian students learned Italian also through translations, which is um, a very interesting concept. And 
Uh, so Lessico Familiare really opens up a word of family and a word of memory, and it's a book that's been translated all over the world. A very rare thing, because it's usually, as I said, the other way around. Italian books should be translated more. And so it's, it's, a, it's a book that I think everyone should read, and it would be very easy to understand everywhere in the U.S. or everywhere in the world.